Yo, 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 what's good, people? Welcome to the channel where we talk about music licensing, music production, and music business. If you love any of the previously mentioned, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all my latest content and hit that bell icon so you know exactly when that new content drops. Shout out to everybody that's in the stream so far. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you do. Before we dig into these questions, got a special guest today. I'm super excited. Creative, I see you in the building. What's good, man? All is well. I hope the same. Mark Hemley, what's good? Teron, or yeah, Teron Murray, what's up? From London, UK, what's good? Kim Durr, what's good? Good morning. How are you and your family doing? Me and the fam are good. Still sick, but <laughs> we're, we're doing better. Um, recovering. But uh, all is well. Everybody's back to work today. So we're on the grind. Eric Isles was good. Um, who we got? Woody? Woo, Woo Day was good from Seattle. Michael Connor from Vancouver, Canada in the building. What's good, Michael? Good to see you. Um, so I'm super excited, man. T today's guest. I always get hit with like a bunch of legal questions and I'm like, yo, I am not a lawyer, an attorney or anything close to it. Um, I, I see a lot of agreements and things like that. So, you know, I see some things that pop up all the time in, in every agreement that I go through. But I figured why not have a professional come and chop it up and answer whatever questions y'all have, specifically an entertainment lawyer um, who goes by. Uh, the name, the latte lawyer, a.k.a. Samara Jacques. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So without further ado, let's introduce the latte lawyer. What's good? How are you doing, Samara? Hi, I'll be honest. I'm a transactional attorney for a reason, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm good. How are you? It's all good. I'm I'm nervous all the time, and I do this every week, so it's Not all this good. Whole production. You're giving me like a whole <laughs> broadcast thing. I was waiting. I was like, oh, okay. I don't know. Should I talk? Like it was. It's legit. That's you know? hilarious. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, just introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Um. What you do. What you specialize in. From you know a legal perspective. Sure. Um. My name is Samara Jacques Esquire. I, I say it because I earned it. Um. <laughs> I'm an attorney. Uh, I practice in entertainment, intellectual property, which is, you know, soft IP, I call it, which is trademark and copyright, um, uh, business law, because every independent artist is a business. So that's part of it. And then also e-commerce, because I dealt with a lot of merch. So I then ended up just working on e-commerce space just all by itself, too. So that's what nice. I do. Nice. So, OK, this is a question I've always had. Um, what so what does Esquire mean? Because I see it at, you know, at the end of the name. What What is that exactly? It just gives you um, the the denotation that you're an attorney. Like, OK, uh, you have like MD means medical doctor. Right. Esquire just means that this person is an attorney and probably okay. up. Because gotcha. we're, we're pretty up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I always wondered that. Um, so that that makes sense. That makes sense. So listen, like law is like one of those things that. It's intriguing and it's also overwhelming, you know, if you don't know it. But then, you know, if if you know it or you have somebody on your team who who knows it, um, it can be really, really powerful and, and keep you out of, you know, a lot of bad situations in, in the music industry. We always hear about, you know, the bad deals and things like that. But I think it a lot of it is because. You know, there just wasn't enough time taken to, uh, you know, to really seek legal advice. Um, and, you know, people just get excited about being signed and then they just sign on the, on the line and then, boom, it's a jacked up situation. So, like, what going into law, like what made you want to specialize in the things that you specialize in? Uh, actually, I kind of. I know you don't say fall into um, entertainment, but I I, work, I live in Miami. I live and work in Miami. Okay. So if you're going to be an entertainment lawyer, you really honestly mostly work in New York and L.A. Um, I did a bunch of other things as a lawyer when I graduated. Uh, but what I found is when I started my own firm, the first person that came to me was uh, a, a rapper who happened to be vegan. So I had a bunch of people who then started t talking to me about entertainment. I always loved music. I always loved art. And so it just kind of worked out well for me that what I wanted to do originally just kind of came to me. Um, right. And I, I literally kind of fell into it after years of working in other places as a lawyer. Nice, nice. That's what's up. I, I think it's dope when you can kind of 
align um you know align those things in, in different passions and in, in a, a specific specific area to be able to help um a lot of people kind of in that that same space so that's dope my guy creative with the first question of the the podcast he he wants to know could you trademark his name for him i can i offer that as a service and i always tell people that's super <clears throat> important to do mm. um i think when i'm trying to remember the name of the country group now uh, they switched their name and they, they use another like black artist name. So that was that was a big deal. Lady D, I think, okay. was the name of it. Um, so yeah, it's just it's important to trademark your name. You're a brand, you're a business. If you want to work with a bigger company, they want to make sure they have some insurances with licensing. So they're going to make sure and ask if you have a trademark. So yes, I do. And yes, every artist should trademark their name. Nice. Um, that's crazy. So I, I have... I have a name that's it's in the process of, of being trademarked. Um, l- like, let's talk about the importance of that, because, I mean, I see so many people on their Instagram pages, you know, producers using these names and they're derived from stuff that's already out. Like, what are some of the like the legal impl- Im- implications that you can kind of run into, you know, using a name or a part of a name that may already be trademarked? Um you know, the advantages of, of getting it trademarked. Can, can you talk about that a little bit? Okay, so I guess there are two parts to your question. One is if you have infringement of someone who already has a trademark name. So if you're using, I know like a lot of luxury brands, so like Fendi, Cartier, like all those are used in rapper names. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to end up losing your name. Uh, it's just that's going to happen. They're going to send you a cease and desist. And then you're if you don't follow the cease and desist, they're going to sue. Yeah. So you should probably avoid those. Um, As far as trademarking your name, um, look on TESS, that's Trademark Electronic Search System, T-E-S-S, and see if somebody already has your trademark name. That's your first step. If somebody doesn't have it, you can just go ahead and apply for the trademark, either as an intent to use, if you haven't actually released music yet, or as actual use, if you have. So that's what I would say about what you're asking about trademark. I mean, it gets a little more complicated, but trying to make it as easy as possible, those are options got you um and then michael michael connor with the follow-up says i guess that still applies even if you're using your legal name so is that is that a thing to like trademark your just your birth name i love that question because that allows me to talk about one of my favorite artists in the world rihanna um so (laughs) fenty as you know savage by fenty her dad last name is fenty and Mm. he she sued him for using the fenty name wow so yeah, you have to trademark your first and your last name also. That's That can be an issue for you uh, if you don't trademark your legal name, if you're using it professionally. So, okay, so so how does that work? So what did, what did he do to to infringe? Like, was he, like, did, was he launching a brand and, like, used the name, like, his name or Fenty or, like? I how? believe, I don't recall the particulars of the case, so I don't okay. want to you know, speak out of turn, yeah. but I know that he was using it in certain like business relations and negotiations that he didn't have authorization to use the name for. Wow. Um, and also you have to go by category. So for her, it would be clothing and beauty, right? With beauty and wellness. Mm-hmm. So if he was using it on the outside category, like let's say it was for... I don't know, woodworking or furniture, then maybe he has a leg to stand on to be able to use that name. But under her specific categories, he can't. So that's why she sued him. So even though it's his actual last name, when he was using it professionally in business, he got sued for trademark infringement. Wow, that's crazy. Um, And another thing, you know, that I, I get a lot is, low like so okay for example clint productions right there's clint productions and then i have a logo for clint productions if i like submit a trademark is it cover both or is that technically two different trademarks i absolutely love that question because i always tell people don't worry about the logo worry about the word first Mm. it's not going to do you any good if you trademark a logo and somebody else gets the word mark it's two separate so i would always say go for the word mark first see if you get it then worry about the logo after. Once you have the word mark, then you can go and worry about the logo. Or if you can afford it, do both at the same time, but always word mark first. Okay, dope, dope. Um, the Somebody wanted to know the website again. Is it just TESS.com? Uh, if you put, okay, so I know Google, they go towards like um, what you are, like it's personalized the search. So when I put in test, it means trademark electronic search system because that's all I chose. 
but I told a client to do it and they got Tessa Thompson. So put um, trademark electronic <laughs> search system. Okay. And that you should be able to find it that way. Dope, dope. Malvin Miner, what's good? Malvin wants to know, do you suggest trademarking in multiple classes? Okay, first, shout out to Malvin for knowing what a class is, because that's awesome. Um, <laughs> a class is a category. So if you're selling in, let's say you're doing clothing, apparel is usually what um, we have for our uh, artist clients. So class nine is for music. Class 25 is for apparel. And I always forget if it's class 45 or 44, but that's for actually performing, like being on stage and performing live. And then I believe class 16 is for like paper goods. So like stickers and things like that. Um, but yeah, per class, like you would do multiple classes if you're doing things in those multiple categories. So as an artist, you're probably going to always have three minimum, which is class nine, which is selling your actual records, class 25, which is apparel and class again, it's in the forties, um, is performing like live performance. Gotcha. So I would suggest that if you can. And also remember it's expensive. Uh, it's, it's now three, I think 350 or a little bit more or less than that. Yeah. Per category, I can double check. Um, but what you can do is if you file a 1B, this is getting a little technical, um, but a 1A, which is actual use, mm -hmm. you can pay the initial amount for one class. And then two months later, like layaway, you can end up paying it afterwards. Okay. So that's a little cheat code if you're able to like at least file and then pay later. Nice. Nice. Um, and then for, for those who don't know, like the difference, like when do you use copyright because you do copyright law as well as mm -hmm. trademark right so mm -hmm. like what's the difference between the two like when you should copyright when you should should trademark um just so people are clear on on when and, and why to use you know certain ones so like excellent questions um so uh copyright is for um protecting your artwork uh, so we actually, every time we call it, if it's original and it, it's in a fixed, tangible medium, that's the legal language. Mm -hmm. So it's actually written down or it's recorded. You already have a copyright. You really don't have to do anything else because you have it. Now, you have to register your copyright in order to protect it from other people. That's the insurance. You can't sue anybody if you don't register your copyright with the copyright office. So copyright.gov. Gotcha. So that's for that. Um, as far as trademark, trademark is for services and for products. It's not really meant for you. It's meant for the people who want to consume your product. So for instance, for a trademark, if I'm an artist and I have, let's say I decide to go with like Clintana music, right? Mm -hmm. And they may think I'm related to Clint music because my name is Clintana. So um, that confuses the end user thinking that I'm like related to you. That's the only reason they went to my like page. So that's what a trademark is for. It's supposed to protect your brand. So that way people know that it's, if I'm saying it's Clint music, that I know that that's the trademark Clint music and not another person who's trying to like basically um, take from your goodwill and all of the work that you did to get people to notice your brand. Gotcha. So the trademark is for the consumer really to protect this consumer. So they're buying for what they think they're supposed to be buying from. And the copyright is just to protect your art, to keep other people from using your art without your permission. Dope, dope. That's a, that's a dope explanation. Um, okay. sh shout out I'm to trying to make it less complicated, so I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. It's nah, yeah. That that's very. It's easy easy to understand, especially when you're not a lawyer. You know what I mean? Um, well, that's the funny part too. In law school, um, they said ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So hmm. everybody is subject to the law, but the law is made really complicated. So I felt overwhelmed by law school too. And I think that's sort of my mission is to be like, the law should be, it's made for everybody. It yeah. applies to everybody. So you should be able to understand it too. It's just like learning a different language. So it's not impossible for you to do. If I can do it, you can do it. That's dope. Love it. Um, Eric wants to know, how long does it take for the trademark to be assigned to a reviewer and for you to get your certificate back? <sighs> Eric. Um, <laughs> so it used to be, yeah, it used to be three months um to get assigned to a reviewer now it's moved to like six to nine months uh because they're overwhelmed with trademarks so it takes a very long time yeah I, I think also there's a backlog people are being more entrepreneurial so people which is great that's wonderful like people are you know protecting their assets as they should yeah. but there aren't enough people to process so it's taking a much longer time to yeah. get everything done 
Uh, so it's, it's six months till you actually get an examiner. So that's another attorney to check your case. It could take another two to three months after that. So it's looking like it's taking like more than a year, a year, maybe a year and a half. If there's complications, like you get an office action, which basically means like, hey, there's a problem. We're telling you what the problem is. That could be like two years. So one to two years. Wow. One if you're lucky. Right. Now, if if you're in the process of of getting it registered and you're going through it and working out, you know, potential complications, can you still use that mark? Can you clarify the question for me a little bit? So, OK, say, you know, say we submit an application for a brand name um, mm -hmm. and I want to start printing this brand name on, you know, merchandise and things like that. Um, while that application is still being processed, am I still able to, to legally use that and keep, oh, I guess I couldn't keep people or, or enforce people yeah, from- you, you still can. So that's a great oh, okay. question because okay. I get that all the time. Um, there's a circle R. That means that you've gotten the registration. If you see okay. that behind the brand name, that means that that person has a registered trademark. That's what it means. Circle R is oh, okay. registered. Okay, got um, you. Right, but I have a lot of clients. One in particular, I'm not going to name him, Okay. Uh, but he kept using the circle R everywhere. And I'm like, dude, we have not finished the application. That's a reason that they're going to like deny your application because you're basically falsely saying you have a registration without having a registration. Oh, wow. So you like if you see my like anybody's, you can see TM. That means that you're in the process. OK, so you can put that anywhere. OK. Um, and if somebody's using your trademark, you can still say, hey, we're in the application process. You can send a demand letter or cease and desist. OK, got you. Right. So but, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say so. So TM, you can use TM if you started the registration process and you're kind of in the middle of it, and then you use R and the the circled R once it's complete and official. You, right. You can use the TM at any time. As soon as you have your product to market or you're selling to people, you can put the TM. Okay. The R is when you get that certificate. They give you like a paper certificate with a little gold like emblem on it, like a you know, so that way you have your registration. Then you can use the circle R. So okay. I always like have a little celebration for my clients, but like you can use the circle R now. So nice. That's what you need to. Yeah, that yeah. was a great question because I no. literally was. Please stop using the circle R. <laughs> yeah, Don't I always, use the circle R until you get the certificate. Please, please. please yeah, please. I always wonder what the what the difference was between the R and the TM. Um, so dope that that clarifies that. It Caesar, can help. I had a client tell me the R means you're official AF, and the okay. TM means that you're just figuring it out like right now. So <laughs> that might help you. I don't love know. it. Love it. Yeah, that, no, that's super helpful. Caesar had a question. He said, if you own a trademark name and someone else is using the same name musically on platforms like Spotify, excuse me, how can the trademark owner stop them from using the name and removing the music? Oof. Okay, so um, there is international trademark uh, and then there's the U.S. trademark. Um, if the person's a U.S. trademark owner um, and international, too, what you can do is you can send to the legal department of Spotify. You can look it up. Look up for the, the, DMC, the DMCA custodian. So that's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act custodian. Um, and tell them that you have a trademark and that that person's infringing on your trademark and you're requesting to take it down. Actually, don't request demand. Um, they'll respond to you and they'll let you know whether they're going to do it or not. Most times, though, you have to go to court okay. and you're going to have to sue the person. Now, if the person is international um, and they have their trademark outside of the country, it makes it a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest going the DMCA route first <clears throat> and contacting the legal department and asking for it to be taken down. If that doesn't work, then contact a lawyer. Nice, nice. Um, and then Stone Tribe, uh, what's the, the cost of trademarking your name? It depends. So let me actually look it up right now because, again, the, the trademark filing went up and it's per category. So okay. it's if you're only filing in one class, then it's going to end. Let's see. Here we go. Because they raised the fees. They jumped the prices up. They was like, if y'all want to be entrepreneurial, then we going to raise these prices on you. <laughs> I was telling people, I was like, file now, man, because it's going to go and get expensive. Um, yep. Yeah, so T standard and T's plus. There's, I always tell people to do T standard. I know T's plus sounds good and it's cheaper, but it actually costs you more money because every time there's a mistake, they charge you an additional fee. 
Uh, It'll tell you. So it's better just to pay more money on upfront, but T standard is 350 per class. It used to be 275. Okay. So for every class, every category, it's 350. So if you're doing two classes, that's $700 just for the filing. Now, if you choose an attorney, we start at, depending on who they are, we have to, we run a more, um, besides the test search, we run a, like a more exhaustive search. Okay. So I charge 500 for the search and then a thousand flat fee to file the trademark. Okay. So plus like additional classes, which I think is $50 on top. So yeah. if you're doing it with an attorney, we're talking about a thousand plus. If you're doing it by yourself, then it's going to be 350 for each category. So at a minimum, we talked about the two categories, or if you're going to do three, then that would be two categories would be 700. And then three categories, I believe would be 1050. Nice. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. And then like, so, okay. So if it comes back and they're like, um, there, there's some, some errors or something like that. Um, is there like additional fees to go back and like fix that stuff? Not if you filed T's standard. Okay, However, I see what you, mean. you have to look through the USPTO like code. You've got to do a lot of research. That's why I tell people it may be worth it. I always feel like it's worth it to t at least talk to an attorney before you file. Yep. But if you get to that point where you get an office action, speak with an attorney. Got you. Because you don't want to mess that up, honestly. Because no, then you have to start all over again and pay all over again. And uh, it's just not worth it. Yeah. It, it seems best to just get an attorney up front and just have Or, it like I said, yeah, just do a consultation. Some people, they've I've just walked them through it, and they've been able to do it, and they don't have any problems. So, nice. I mean, it just really depends on, like, how complicated it's going to be. And if you have any, basically, like, you have any issues that could come up. Like, uh, likelihood of confusion is an gotcha. issue that could be an issue. Okay. Um, and then Malvin with another one, when a word or name status is dead, can that be purchased or transferred to someone else? That's a great is Malvin question. a trademark attorney? I don't know. He sounds like it though. Yeah, he's giving Malvin, me Malvin's Malvin. been doing his research. <laughs> I like Malvin. Um, so if it's dead, it depends on how dead it is, like how deceased. So if it's recently um, dead, you can apply for it. It doesn't get transferred. What you do is just apply for the dead mark. Um, because it's abandoned at that point. However, they do have a petition to revive because I recently had a dead trademark that I revived. So if the person revives it, then you applied for a trademark that you can't have and then you got to fight with that person for the trademark. So I would see how far I would wait at least a year if you're going to try to do that tactic um, or at least contact whoever filed it to see if you can, you know, basically try to take the trademark right from them because even if they didn't register it, they've still been using it in commerce. So they could still have a common law right that they can try to use. Got you. So can you like, can you trademark a name? Say you have a name, like I know somebody's going to use this name down the road. Can you like trademark it and then not use it and just, yeah, and those just are called sit trademark on it? Trolls. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. Yeah. People make money off of that. They, they file for trademarks <laughs> knowing that people are going to want to use them. Yeah. And then they're like, Oh, bet I have the trademark. You can buy it from me from like, three, four times the price. It's like a whole industry. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, super dope. Tom Adams, welcome to the stream. For the new people joining the stream, we are talking with the Latte Lawyer, talking about entertainment law, um, trademark, copyright, e-commerce, all of that stuff to make sure you guys are protected legally and, and educated legally. Um, so a lot of dope questions. Um, if you have a question, drop it in the chat and then we will answer it. Um, Tehran says, is there a UK equivalent to the TESS site or can I register my trademark name on the TESS site and get international coverages? He can, and I'm embarrassed here, but I don't have my battery and my foot, my laptop is going to die. So if you can give me a little, like a little break. I'll yeah, be yeah, go now. ahead. No doubt. Thank no you. doubt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, this is, this is super dope information. Um, especially if. <clears throat> if you're it like if you're not in law you know what i'm saying like it's just it's so much it's so much information um so many details and it can just get confusing so having somebody kind of clarify that is super super helpful Akila, was good glad you're enjoying the information uh michael says i was thinking the same thing about canada indeed um let's see yeah okay malvin's not an attorney he just does a lot of research i love it 
Uh, Zim says, "I will." If you want to be a paralegal, let me know. I could definitely use a chair. There, there you go. You got a paralegal opportunity, Malvin. Uh, Zim Zada says, "I will certainly play this back and take all the notes." That's a fact. Same here. I'm, I'll all be right. playing it back. We're good. We're charging. We're good. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, the question was about the UK. Yeah. Um, so that's a great question. The UK has their own, there's something called territoriality. So, uh oh, you still there? If, uh oh, it froze up. Did it freeze up for y'all? <clears throat> Just when the, when the info starts getting good. Let's give her a uh, let's give her a few minutes and see if it it comes back. Um, Eric says this trademark thing is super important. No one should sleep on this. That's a fact. Um, that's a fact. Like on both sides. Like if you have if you have things that you need trademark, and it just it helps you from infringing on somebody else's trademark and then ending up in a situation where you owe somebody a lot of money because you know you you weren't legally using something um so yeah there we go okay she's coming back all right okay Sorry. no no you're good <laughs> okay um, um yeah so every country has their own system of laws um there are certain treaties that we have where we have reciprocity so if you apply um there's something called the madrid Pro protocol so if i apply in the u.s and pay a fee there are certain other countries where i can get my trademark. Now, after the UK had Brexit, that was a whole issue because it used to be part of the European Union and now it's not. So you can file and they do have the, their own search system. So if you look up a UK trademark search, you'll find it. Um, but that's how you would find it in the UK. But people usually, if you want to file in the US, you have to find, and if you're an international person, you can't file on your own, you have to use an attorney. So that's an important, if you want to file a U.S. trademark and you're a foreign national, you have to find a U.S. attorney to file for it. You can't do it yourself. Wow. Okay, dope. Um, Stone Tribe with, with a dope question. Do trademarks have a contract life or once you're registered, are you forever protected? You are not um, because the U.S. government likes their fees and their money. So um, after a certain number of years, I believe it's, it's eight, they give you... Um, a uh, application to renew and show that you're continuing to use your trademark. Okay. Um, or maybe it's five. It's it's five to eight. it's I think it's five to six. Okay. Um, but you'll get a, you'll get a, a basically a notice saying that. Now, if you don't pay the fee and if you don't show that you're still using it, right? Because you have to continue to use it. You use if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. um, then you will lose your trademark. So it's not a for everything like you set it and forget it. You yeah. still got to maintain it. And I tell people as soon as they get their trademark, set their Google calendar, set their Apple calendar out for five, six years out and know that you're going to be having to renew and show that you're renewing um, and using your trademark. Okay, that makes sense. Gotta maintain um, it. Yeah. Do they charge you like the same fee as the original filing or is it just like a just a renewal fee? It's a cheaper fee for now, but okay. laws change. So yeah. we'll see. OK, super yeah. dope. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anybody else with, with any other questions, uh, make sure you drop them in the chat. This is super good. This is great info. Um, I guess let's uh, we got another one from DIY. Uh, what's the difference between a trademark and service mark and is there a catch-all registration or do they need to be registered separately sorry if this has already been asked i feel like there's a bunch of trademark attorneys on here and nobody's telling me i feel like i'm being set up a little bit but that's I can, okay i can <laughs> confirm diy is not a trademark attorney I got you. no these are great questions so technically a trademark would be for a good like a product Okay. A service mark is for like what I do or what you do is providing a service. Well, you would be both because you provide music, which is a good, and okay. you provide a service, which is what you're doing now, like your coaching and your you know podcast and everything else. Okay. Um. So, but we use the catch-all of trademark, so you don't have to apply separately. The trademark office handles trademarks and service marks. Hmm. Okay. Um. So the, all those classes, if you go to the class one to about class in the mid twenties. Those are all would technically be trademarks because they're for goods. And then okay. the higher numbers up to the 40s are service marks. But we just all call them trademarks. So there's okay. no separate application for a trademark and a service mark. Technically, they're different, but we all lump them in as trademarks. 
Okay, gotcha. Does that answer your question? I didn't want to make that super complicated. <clears throat> um, let's see if he if if he responds. It's okay. He says he knows a little. Um, he has to go back to the law firm. <laughs> Super dope. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about agreements because I get a lot of questions, especially from producers and artists, producer agreements and things like that. Like what he said, yes, that does answer his question, and thank you. Um, what are like some of the the common points to look for in an agreement? Whether it's well, I guess they're different production versus licensing, but what what are some some like. I guess some common things to look for. What are points that can be negotiated? Like what are the, the, the meat and potatoes of a contract? Okay. Well, I mean, we're talking about sinks. That's, you know, the bread and butter here of this page. Mm. Um, so mostly I think when we talk about sinks, I always talk about grant of rights. That's something that you always want to look at. Cause you always talk about it too. Like I knew about you before I got on this and Tammy shouted me out on the last time. I think that's why you know me. Oh, was because of the show. She's nice. amazing. Um, but an assignment, like grants of rights, you need to know what an assignment and a license are. With a music library, you're probably going to end up with an assignment. So you're going to lose the rights to your work, depending on the music library. Um, with a music supervisor, if you're going to get a sync, it's always a license. So that means you keep your rights most of the time, mm -hmm. unless it's like with, like if you're doing a score or something, then you may end up assigning. So I say that's one grant of rights. Look the difference between a sign that means you've lost everything and a license, which means you keep it, but they get certain rights. Okay. Speaking of licensing, you want to look if it's exclusive or not and for how long, because if it's exclusive, then as you know, then you can't use that song with anybody else for a certain time. You want to look at, you know, what the mediums are like, is it going to be just on, you know, um, film? Is it going to be on TV? Is it going to be OTT, which is like over the top direct streaming like Hulu or Netflix, you know? Mm -hmm. So you want to look at those like the territory and the transmission rights that you're looking at. Okay. And then territory too is going to be in the US is going to be international. If it's international, then there's certain sub publishing rights that you can use. And what I also try to add recently is trying to say like when they have to put the queue in. Okay. Because a lot of times they put the queue like which the cue sheet, I don't know. I, I think your audience probably knows this. Is if, how they, you if, if they don't, you go ahead and, and just okay. give them, explain. A cue sheet basically is uh, provided by the music supervisor, whoever's handling the licensing. And it gives you the time, the little timestamps when your song is played and for how long. And that's how you get paid royalties on the back end by your PRO or for, you know, the mechanicals or whatever other neighboring rights that are there. But sometimes they do it immediately and sometimes they do it a year out. And in that year, you haven't collected any back catalog, like back royalties. Yeah. So I try to put in the, like, I would ask to put in like when they're going to deliver the cue sheet to the PRO. So you know when you're going to start collecting your money. That's good. That's smart. I never thought of that because literally sometimes we're just waiting like, has it, right. has it been submitted? <laughs> but that, They'll that put helps. a reasonable time and it's always unreasonable. Like it's always like two years six months, like wow. whenever they feel like it. And right. you know, you gotta give yourself some protections. Okay, dope, dope. Um, Wendy McBain, what's up Wendy? Says, with a music library assignment, do you lose your rights if the assignment is exclusive rather than non-exclusive? Okay, so if somebody writes exclusive or not, that's a good question. If somebody writes exclusive or non-exclusive assignment, they don't know what they're doing. An assignment is you wholly transfer everything. You don't own anything anymore. The only time you'd have exclusive or non-exclusive is if it's a license. So if you okay. see the word assignment, you've lost all your rights to the song. Wow. So and if they it... put exclusive or non-exclusive, that means that you need to worry about who's writing that contract for you because they don't know what they're talking about. Got you. So is it is it possible to assign something only for a certain amount of time? You can do an assignment with a reversion. Okay. So that means like I'm giving it to you, but then you have to give it back to me, but you have to transfer the copyright. And I it's see. a whole series of paperwork. Gotcha. It makes more sense and it's easier to just have a license. So they're given like, like a lease, basically. You own the house, but they have a lease to use your music for a certain amount of time. And then they have to vacate the premises and let you get back into the building because it's yours. Okay. So that's what I would tell you. Like, don't... Unless you're willing to give away your music and it's a really good like upfront advance or it's, you know, it's going to get your foot in the door and you're willing to give that music away, 
if you have the word assignment in there, that means you're not getting it back. And they most likely aren't going to give you a reversion. But if you do have an assignment, you can mm -hmm. ask for a reversion. And I would ask for a reversion. Okay, got you. Malvin Miners back. He said, do, do you offer contract templates or do you create contracts for a specific scenario? Uh, we, we're right now a couture contract shop. So we, we make it fit to order for each person. I am, I started actually yesterday. I did, I'm doing a drive to get people to register for sound exchange okay. um, and like to register for their royalties. So I think based on that, a lot of people have asked me for split sheets. So I think that'll be our, like our first, um, <clears throat> no, uh, template, uh, contract. So I am working nice. on it, but I haven't done it yet. Okay. Dope. Dope. Um, and I think for, for anyone interested in that, definitely tap in with the latte lawyer, um, on Instagram, um, and then, you know, at the end of the show, we'll let people know where they can they can get in touch with you um, and, and right. tap in with but anything. Ever. Sorry, last thing, because I feel bad not giving all the information. I think I give too much. Um, there are templates available that are good. Um, music Business Contracts, which is like a well-known web page. Um, mm -hmm. It's they're out of Nashville and they have template contracts. Um, nice. They're a little long, but if you already understand and I think it's it's Melvin, right? Yep, Malvin. There are, are hopefully my future paralegal on the side. Um, <laughs> so Malvin, since he already knows a lot, then you know that would be a good place to start. And then what you do is you take that template and then just have a lawyer review it. I charge two fifty an hour, so for like reviews, I charge less. So I'll probably charge like a hundred dollars an hour. And if it's a simple review, I can just go over and see if there's any problems and basically just proofread it for you. Nice. So that's and an option. Too. What was that website again? Uh, I think it's musicbusinesscontracts.com. It's really like straightforward. Okay. Let me see if I can find it right now. That's dope. And it's definitely worth it. Like, I feel like a lot of people try and like cut corners and like not pay for an attorney. It's like, look, man, it's just, it's just easier. It's just save yourself a headache and, you know, and, yeah, it, and then it, it, it's a write off too. For your yeah. That, thank you for saying that. <laughs> I put that on my invoices. I'm like, if you use, well, it's a write off. If you're like an LLC or a corp, if you're a sole proprietor, it's still a write off, but make sure to have a separate bank account as a sole proprietor for all of your business stuff. Cause otherwise Good that's, point. they're going to have access to all of your stuff. And I don't know what you're buying on the internet or not. And you don't need everything. You know, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good point. Good point. But yeah. Um, yeah, def definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Um, Eric says, you definitely know your stuff. Is, is are, are you an attorney because she knows her stuff? Yes, she's like legit. Like a so, it says okay. It in the name. I'm a lawyer. Exactly. Right the latte lawyer. <laughs> it's official. Um, so is there a difference between the term lawyer and attorney? Another these are one these are my random wonders of law. Yes. Uh, a lawyer is someone who graduated from law school. An okay. attorney is someone that is barred. So they had to pass a terrible, awful, uh, still stressful test <laughs> in order to become an attorney called the, the bar in each state. Okay. Uh, and then once you are barred, you're a barred attorney. So that is the difference. Lawyer okay. just graduated from law school. Attorney has to take that second step and be able to be certified by the state to be able to practice law. Okay. I never knew that. I learned something new. So if so, you just graduated, didn't take the bar exam. You're just a, you're a lawyer. But then once you pass the logs the the bar exam then you become an attorney yeah nice i'm learning i'm stepping my knowledge up this is I great see that. i like you it know? i like it you already had glasses so i already knew that you were legit you already <laughs> exactly people with glasses <laughs> they they're usually on top of it you know because um, we got bad eyes so. exactly <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> Uh, DIY says, I love the libraries that copy and paste terms without knowing what they mean. Makes for good negotiating points. That's that part. Hilarious. That yeah. part. That's why when he said an exclusive or non-exclusive assignment, I was like, who wrote that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Caesar says, I noticed that a publishing company is claiming my publishing on several of my songs, but I have never did a publishing deal with them. I noticed this on my pro uh, PRO site. How should I approach this? Contact the PRO immediately and let them know that someone is claiming your rights without your authorization um, and that they need to immediately stop that. If they don't, then you can go to an attorney and you can sue the PRO. That's important. Nice. Um, Michael Connor wants to know what's an average fee to charge for assignment rights of a song. 
Oof, I, I hate that word average when it comes to this, but I, I get you. I know, um, I I'm better with averages when it comes to working with labels. Every company is different <laughs> depending on the size of the company, whether they're big or small. Um, so it could be a couple hundred dollars. It could be a couple thousand. I just know the people that pay more uh, are usually um, advertising agencies for like exclusive quarterly campaigns. Okay. So those are usually like 10, 20, 250,000. Gotcha. Um, but it, it really just depends on who you're working with. Cool. And then AJ wants to know, would you recommend working with a sync library on an exclusive basis over non-exclusive? What are your views on sync agents? So a couple different questions. Okay. Would I recommend working with a sync library on an exclusive basis? Um, this is where the disclaimer comes in. Uh, as the interview, this is not like legal advice, it's just education and information. Um, what I recommend it, I think you have to do your due diligence on the library, see what they've actually placed. If you can, and they have a list of people they work with, try contacting those people and see if they've actually gotten paid on time, because that happens a lot. Um, and then see how long the exclusivity is. And also see if the, exclusi if the exclusivity is per genre. So if you're a multi-genre artist, Maybe you give an exclusive for like R&B in one place and rock in one place. So you can still be able to move your music in different places, but um, not be tied down to just one company. I don't think it's ever a good idea to be in a like a monogamous relationship with a sync library. If you can work with as many people as possible, that's good, especially as a producer. Because producers, the reason I like working with them, they have a lot of different work like uh, contracts coming in, but that's because they're able to move around. It's not like an artist where you're stuck with a label for a really long time. Yeah. You can work with so many people and then you have so many different streams of income coming in. So I say usually non-exclusive is best, but if it's um, exclusive for like a quarter and it's a, you know, a campaign with like Chevy or some big brand, then definitely take that. That's worth it. Nice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always tough to to try and come up with with an average. It's, it's, it always like depends on different things. So, well, that was a I good mean, answer. I would ask you because you're the one that deals with this every day, all day. So. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and it, it's always like I think you, what you said was good was doing the due diligence, seeing if you know if they're getting placements. You know, how often are they getting placements? But I have a combination of both. You know, I have some. Um, non-exclusive deals, some exclusive deals. These days, a lot of them has have been more exclusive. Right. And not necessarily like everything I do goes through this one company, but that particular master, you know, is, you know, signed with that company. So I can still create more music and, and send that to different companies. But um, yeah, but yeah, there's, there's a few non-exclusives mixed in there. Right. Yeah. But so you have you have your variety, you know, which is yep. good. I think that that's the way to go. Yep, indeed. Um, so yeah, uh, dope stuff. Um, I didn't even know. I didn't know you did trademark um, a, until today, honestly. <laughs> so that that's good to know. Um, I I feel like you can never know too many attorneys. Um, it, it's just always it's always good to be connected. I um, used to think that was the case. I was like, I know too many attorneys, and now <laughs> as I've gotten older, I was like, oh, you need a criminal lawyer? I got you. You got a family lawyer? I got you. So like, it's it's good to have a, enough people in different areas because yep. you never know. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, Kaboom Beats says, do certain entertainment uh, attorneys like latte lawyer? So the latte lawyer is an attorney because she took the bar. You took the bar exam, right? Well, I'm a lawyer and an lawyer. attorney. I can be both. Okay. It's like a rectangle. You can be both. Is, what is it? A rectangle and a square are rectangles, but a square is not. Okay. A rectangle is not a square, right? Because it has to be even on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a lawyer because I passed. I mean, because I graduated from law school. Okay. But I'm also an attorney because I am barred. Okay, right? so you can use either one. So I'm both. Nice. If you, the only time it matters, like that's why I don't make the distinction here. I call myself the latte lawyer because it just sounded good, okay. um, and not the latte attorney. But um, if I if I didn't pass the bar, um, then I would just be the lawyer. So okay. both are fine. You can reference, you know, me as both. Nice. Uh, so the question with my bad, I went, I was just like, wait a minute. I learned something <laughs> no, new. We got it. Like, <laughs> you ruined for me. That's nice. We've, we've connected. This is good. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Uh, she said, do certain entertainment lawyers like 
the latte lawyer help producers get deals and placements? Oof, okay, so that's a very good question, and that talks about ethics. Um, so that's called shopping. Okay. Uh, in California, there's an issue because lawyers are not agents, but they do sort of the shopping for their clients, um, and that's been an issue. Um, I do not shop for my clients, which means that I will find a placement for you, let's say, with Universal, and then I'm going to take a percentage. The reason I don't do that is because if I find a deal for you with Universal, then I'm honestly not every I'm sorry, like the attorney probably isn't going to go as hard for you because at the end of the day, they know they're getting a percentage of whatever you make. Mm. I charge a flat fee. I tell you how much I cost. And then I am separate and apart from Universal. I don't like to have that sort of like weird relationship where I'm finding you a deal with the label, but then also going against the label. Uh, it causes problems. Got you. Uh, so I don't, I don't do it personally. <clears throat> I'm not saying every attorney that does it is unethical, but um, it does cause problems with conflict of interest when you do that. So Got I don't you. do it. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems it seems better. Like when the when lines can kind of get blurred to just kind of steer clear of the it's, it's like it's like producers and samples like in sync licensing we just like you know what let's just not use them at all just to be on right, the same side right exactly. um so yeah tracy said latte lawyer is truly dropping some gems much appreciated <laughs> Uh, make sure you guys hit, smash the, the thumbs up if this information has been good. And if you have a question, drop your question. We'll, we'll have her on for about 10 more minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, so like what are some of the I guess what, what are some of the top mistakes you see a lot of producers and, and artists make in terms of just like legal stuff, whether it's just, you know, signing certain deals or like what are some of the, the big issues you see a lot of? Um. First and foremost, not doing you know simple due diligence. I know that you get excited about money being on the table, um, but I would suggest like at least going to your secretary of state and seeing the person who says that they're an LLC is actually an LLC, right? Um, I think another, I don't like to say the word mistake because you're still learning, right? It's a misstep, maybe taking money without even asking for more. The worst that they can say is no. Yeah. So just, you know, say, hey, you know, is there more money in the budget? For maybe like this much uh, maybe not with like a music supervisor because their budget's very like set but yeah. you know with the licensing company or something like that there's room for negotiation so don't be afraid to negotiate with that um and then what other things do i see the assignment like know the difference between an assignment and a license please um and then signing a power of attorney um that means that the company can sign on your behalf um and making it irrevocable so that means that forever, if you don't like respond to them in five days, regardless of the situation, like you could be in a coma, like you could be on vacation, something could be happening. Yeah. Um, they get the right to sign off forever after that. Oh, so wow. just make sure it's not irrevocable or coupled with interest is another word that I've used myself. I'm not an angel. I've used it on the other side too, right? For mm -hmm. people. So coupled with interest, irrevocable and perpetual um, attorney in fact rights. Just look at those and see if you can cross them out if possible. And if not, at least I'll negotiate a limited term for okay. like how long they're allowed to go ahead and use it. Got you. That's good. Um, <clears throat> oh, and one last one. Um, yeah. When you give your rights, make sure it's just for the current catalog attached on Exhibit A. Don't give them rights to all of your catalog. I've seen people say like before, like any music made before the date of this agreement, mm -hmm. during and after. So Ooh. before means anything that you've already released. That's yours. So look out for that language too. That's super important. They'll sneak it in there. Probably yeah. like on page like four or five. Again, I've done these things. I'm telling you because I've worked for labels and I've worked for artists. Gotcha. So no, I, I love to work for artists, but I also have had to pay bills. And I'm just like, please make sure to read this thoroughly. And when they have an attorney, I tell them that. And I'm like, am I not your attorney, but read it thoroughly because you want to make sure that you see these things and you yeah. call them out. Yeah, that that's crazy because... I was my first publishing deal. It was like you know everything I produced had to go through this this one publisher. Luckily, they didn't have that joint where there was like everything before and after. That that was crazy, but yeah. it was a you know it was a situation where there was there were opportunities that you know I had you know I had curated myself um, connections I've you know built myself and 
you know, as a result, they wanted they wanted a piece of the pie. They wanted to get paid for it, but um, yeah, I, was, I basically told them no. <laughs> so, um, and then got yeah. got out of the deal because you know, I I mean, I feel as a publisher, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Right. So um, just make those carve outs, like special things like that. Like with you, um, make sure to let them know. Like if you found the deal yourself, like that's also why we as attorneys we talk to you first and be like, what do you want? What do you don't don't want? Yeah. And then we include that in the contract too. Because that's not standard language, and you know you don't want to give them the benefit of your hard work, right? right. If you mean so. Yep. That's, that's another thing too. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so Lamar Franklin, he they everybody wants to know how to get in touch with you, latte lawyer. So oh, tell <laughs> tell the people how they could get in touch with you, um, because everybody needs a super dope attorney on their team. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to put that on the cards from now on, a super dope attorney. I like yes, that. Yes, super um, dope <laughs> But for, the, for me, <laughs> what I'm trying is, um, again, I'm only one person. I am a solo um, law firm. So it's just me as the attorney here. Uh, a sole practitioner is what it's called. So I do my best to try to respond to everybody, but it's it's becoming, it's a beautiful thing, but I have a lot of people. Um, so you can DM uh, our office uh, at the Latte Lawyer. You can DM me here. And we can send you a 15 minute free consultation, but those are ending uh, at the end of September Okay. right now. Um, so at this point, um, I'm trying to do more classes, group classes. So I do have like a Google form. It's not going to be up now because I have I'm trying to do a drive for sound exchange. But you can contact me at the Latte Lawyer um, DM or you can contact me by sending it to my admin at hey, H-E-Y, Latte, L-A-T-T-E, at the Latte Lawyer dot com. And you can find us and you can say like, you'd like a consultation or you'd like to speak. And then we'll send you a form to say like what you know need, what you know you need help with. And then we can see if we can take you on if we can. And like, again, I'm 250 an hour. So if it's, you know, above the budget, then we give you referrals to other services like Harvard Rap is wonderful. Um, it's from Harvard Law School and they do transactional work like I do. There's a little bit of a waiting list, but they do the work for free. Nice. Uh, so the, I always give referrals to other like reputable legal services because if you're starting out, you still need the help. Yeah, I may not be able to give it, but I try to give as much free information on my page as possible. So also, if you want to DM with like questions, I love that because that gives me content to make because I'm always running out of ideas. Yeah. So feel free to do that as well. Like I'm happy to answer those kind of questions that you need like this yeah. right now. This is great. Like this is giving me ideas for like what to do for the next couple of posts. Yes, indeed. Um, here's, here's another good question. We'll sneak a couple more in here. Mar Malvin okay. wants to know, would, would he need to set up power of attorney so that his kids can receive royalties later in life? No, you can't tell me Malvin's not a lawyer. Like, I'm done. I'm <laughs> done with Malvin. Real. Um, yes. Do you, oh, so that's called um, passing down uh, the royalties of, like, you can pass them down to your kids, like at Marvin Gaye's kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can do that in a trust. You can do that in a will or what I have done recently uh, in my contracts, especially the sound recording agreements. Okay. And like with publishing, I, I make sure that the royalties are able to be passed down in the actual sound recording agreement. Okay. So you can have that put there as well. But you also want to include that as an asset in your trust or in your will, that your royalties for certain songs are going to be passed down to your children or whoever you're trying to pass it down to. Dope, dope. Um, and then Dice B. You wouldn't set up a power of attorney. I'm sorry, I didn't answer oh. your question. It would be in a will or it'd be in a trust. A power of attorney allows somebody to sign on your behalf for like if you're out of town or something like that, right? Or like for your bank account or something. But you want to set up a will or a trust to pass down your royalties. Okay. And then Dice B says, Do you draw up contracts for music producers to sell beats or music to a recording artist? Yes, I do. I have. Dope. Dope. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's, that's dope. And I, I recommend too, even, you know, if you're selling beats online, I know a lot of the, the stores, they have, you know, these pre-made agreements, but you can actually go in and like update those as well and have an attorney look at it and, you know, put your own terms in there. I know mine, I had to make some changes because they, um, because I do sync and it like it was just non exclusive and I didn't want any issues in that space where somebody just yeah. pops up like, Oh, that, that was the beat to my my single. I need to get paid. So, you know, make sure you, you have all your um, you know, everything kind of set up for your, your custom situation. I will say if you're gonna customize a contract though, especially because I've had issues where I've had to 
follow up with people who have what I call exclusive non-exclusives on BeatStars, okay. which have been a pain mm -hmm. for me and for my clients. Um, just make sure if you're customizing that you really understand what you are changing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and also if you're gonna be doing non-exclusives or exclusives, um, obviously don't sell that to somebody else or if you're planning on selling it to somebody else, make your exclusive for like two months or three months, mm -hmm. you know? And then also if you're coupling a beat with the lyrics, give a new copyright or a new, like you have to have, because it's, it's a derivative work, it's, it's created from the beat, you need to make sure that that new work is also protected. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of people, they'll put their beat with you know the lyrics and they're like, okay, now you have an exclusive right, but then the song still belongs to the producer or we don't even know who the new song belongs to anymore. Mm -hmm. So just think about those things when you're doing it. Beatstars is a wonderful place. It's a great marketplace. It's a lot, a lot of my producers make money. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to change the terms, just really understand what you're changing. And if you're unsure or unclear, it doesn't take anything to contact an attorney, a free one, me, anybody to just be like, hey, I don't know if this works. Can I, you look over for me really quick? Yeah. It will save you so much time and headache later. Facts. This was dope. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to hop on answer these questions and just help us understand a lot of uh, a lot of the legal stuff that you know that we see on a day-to-day -day but may not necessarily understand what it means um so super dope i don't want to hold you i know you're busy you got a lot of work to do but thank you again for uh for coming on chopping it up with us um one last time let the people know where they can follow you um and where they can get in touch with you uh, my new title is Super Dope Attorney, Samara Jock. Um, nice. <laughs> um, thank you for having me, too. I told you I was nervous, but I could talk about law, so it was easy, uh, exactly. and you made it easy. Um, mm -hmm. At The Latte Lawyers, my Instagram, I use TikTok. I'm there somewhat. I'm there, too. But the best place to find me, Instagram, or uh, my website, which is www.thelattelawyer.com. And then if you have questions um, that you want answered on the Instagram page for education purposes, you can DM us. And until the end of September, you can DM us to try to get a free consultation. Just put the words free consultation in the DM and we'll send you a link to book. Dope, dope, dope stuff. All right. Well, that's it. You guys heard it. I appreciate y'all coming through. Shout out to everybody that came through. Make sure you like, share and subscribe tonight at 930 p.m. Eastern. We'll be doing live music reviews. So make sure you guys come back for that. That'll be super dope. Seeing if your music is ready for TV and film. And that's it. I'll catch y'all tonight, man. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Samara, thank you again. And we thank will be ben. in touch. No problem. Yes. Bye. Indeed. Bye bye.